And we just thank God for all the things that He, he does for us. But as I look at this, and we've been talking a lot, and I, I'm always talking about how wicked this world is. And, and our world is really wicked. And it, everywhere you turn, you, you see things. And what my brother faced just last night, uh, and what he's seen, what he has to go through just because of what he found and reported, is, is very, it's very devastating to take to somebody who would just be somebody. Just, 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 just go out of the way to be damaged and to kill folks. It's, it's kind of a crazy thing. But we do live in, in a wicked time. And you know, there is no peace. And that's my title today. There is no peace for the wicked. Now think about that title just for a moment. There is no peace for the wicked. Because the wicked, they try to find peace in the world. And they try to find peace in money. They try to find peace in relationships. They try to find peace in getting drunk or getting high on drugs or whatever. But there's still no peace for the wicked. Because I found out a long time ago, the only peace that you can really have, the only peace that you, true peace, that you can find is when you find Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen? Yes. And that's what we we're going to be celebrating this season about is the birth of our Lord and our Savior. So in Isaiah 48, the 17th through the 22nd verse, I just read from here. Thus saith the Lord, our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the ways you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offsprings would have been like the sand, and your descendants like his grains. Their names would never be cut off or destroyed from before me. Go out from Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans, declare this with a shout of joy, proclaim it, send it out to the end of the earth, say, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. They did not, they did not thirst when he led them through the desert. He made water flow for them from the rocks. He split the rocks and the water gushed out. There is no peace, saith the Lord, for the wicked. Now, during this particular uh, time that we're reading from the children of Israel had the Jews had, uh, had been and, and they were just coming out of captivity for 70 years and the Lord was speaking to them and as I looked at that and he was beginning to tell me tell them what he could do for them and I see that when God's speaking here Israel is a type of Christian and the Lord was saying Israel all these things I have done for you how many know that God has done a lot of things for you today if you know he's got a lot of things for you today, just give him a hand clap of praise. How many of you know that God does, does things for you that you don't even deserve? Yeah, yeah just you can go ahead and give a hand wave if you want to. That's fine. That'll work. So, as I begin to, as I put this message together, and I was praying and, and talking to the Lord about this, and I began to think about peace. We just came through a very devastating election time. And there's a lot of hurting people. And let me tell you, if the other one would have won, there'd been hurting people on the other side. Right. And people are expressing viewpoints that they should not be expressing. But it just seems like their, their, their life has just been turned upside down. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to handle it. They don't know what was going to take place. They're worried about the next four years. They're worried about this. And they're worried about that. I came to the conclusion, I don't need all that junk in my life. I've come to the conclusion, as long as i got Jesus Christ in my life, I have peace. He will guide me, He will protect me, He will take care of me. And I swear about all these things. You see, I, I have, a, I have a, a thought in my mind that God's got everything under control. I just don't think it, I know it. How many know that God's got everything under control? Just as He told the Israel, Israelites, He said, look, man, I, I, I took care of you. You didn't thirst down in the desert, I provided for you. And, and he's always provided. I think sometimes in my mind, I'm in the desert. How many of your mind ever go to a desert type place in your mind? And everything's just dry. And you're thirsty for something. You just don't even know what you're thirsty for. But I found out when I get hold of the peacekeeper, the one that can bring peace back into my life, he takes that thirstiness away and he quenches my thirst, spiritually speaking. So, so God gives us peace to obey him. In the Old Testament, a peace offering was made. 
Sacrifice was accomplished by an offering or unliving cake mingled with oil. The fat was burned on the altar. The right shoulder of the animal sacrifice was given to the priest. The breastfoot was a wave offering. The rest was to be eaten by the offering upon the day of the offering. The offering was given to have peace with God. And during that time, that time frame, they offered a sacrifice. So I ask you a question today. What is your peace offering? Now think about that just for a moment. What is your peace offering? Well, I'm going to share with you what mine is. First of all, mine is our love, or my love. First John, the second chapter, the fourth through the fifth verse says, Who, whoever says, I know him, but look at this, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now think about that first part of the scripture. Now, now think about this here. Let me read that again. Whosoever say, I know him, but does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Have you ever met somebody that couldn't tell you the truth? If their life depended upon it? Yes. <laughs> It just seems like after one story after another, <clears throat> they have to make up one line and cover up the next line, cover up the next line, cover up the next line. But they'll come to church and say, I'm a Christian. Uh -huh. Look what they're saying here. Whosoever say, I know him, but does not keep his commandments as a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, and that's important, but whoever keeps his word in him, true to the love of God, is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Now, I don't read that part again. But whosoever keeps his word. Now, what is his word? His word is our commandments. Amen? How many knows this Bible is very, very important to us? That his word comes alive when I read it. I get an understanding of it. I understand what he wanted me to do. So, the first thing for my peace offering is my love. I want to give my love to Him and I want to share my love to others. Now, my love that I share to others are not under condition. In other words, you love me, I love you back. Or you mistreat me, I can't have nothing to do with you. My love is I love you because of who you are, because who lives in you, because of who lives in me. I love you no matter what. Even if you don't like me, I still love you. There's days I know that she don't like me. <laughs> but I know she loves me. She told me one time, she said, I love you, but I'm not liking you at all right now. <laughs> of course, I didn't do anything. Well, I'll leave that in there. I, I'm preaching, so I'm going to keep it straight. Lord, you know. I probably ate something on it. That's kind of what I do. But there are some people that genuinely we would look to find fault in you. But my service to them is to still love them no matter what. Amen. And to care for them and to pray for them. And, and to make sure that I don't let their dislike of me get in the way of me loving them. Now think about that. that that's pretty hard to do, isn't it? It's hard to love somebody that's not lovable. Amen. Have you ever seen anybody that's not lovable? Look at that. I like the way they do that. Danny, I like Danny. Danny's sitting there. Yeah, I, do, you know, I like the way Danny does it. But, but the point of it is, is it's hard to give that, put that, give that love back, especially when you feel like you're not receiving love. I wonder how many times Jesus says up in heaven looking down on us and just giving us all the love he's got, and we're not even showing any love at all. But folks, if we want peace, we need the love of God. Amen. Amen. So that's the way, love is one way that I, and it's my peace offering to, to the Lord. Another one is my service to Him at home, at church, and even on your job. Is that everything I do is my service is for Him. When I'm at home, I'm still praising Him. When I'm at, when I'm at church, I'm still praising Him. And when I'm on my job, I'm still praising Him. Amen. And you might say, well, your job is the church. Well, it is. But everywhere I go, I still want to praise God. The other, the other day, I had the opportunity to take a trip to North Carolina. What a long trip that was. I, I got the, on the way up there, it seemed like it went kind of quick because I hashed all the problems out of my head. I dealt with it as I was going down the road. And I know people saying, that man's nuts. <laughs> but I know my hands were moving, my jaws were jacking and all that. But I was just getting stuff, working through things in my mind and working. 
And, and, but one thing I did all the way through that was I praised God and gave him the glory. Amen? And gave him the honor and told him how much I am so pleased that, that he is my father and I am his child. How many is happy that God is your father? Amen? And that you're his child? Yeah. So my service to him is important. Well, here's going to be one you. People are going to say, oh, the preacher never talks, says this, but he's going to do it now. You know what another service is? It's my tithe. Oh, y'all got quiet. I like that. Everybody gets just quiet and all of a sudden, what is he going to say? <laughs> my tithe, my giving, what belongs to God. Not only 10% of what of my finances, but 10% of my time. 10% of all, everything I have belongs to God. Well, everything I have belongs to God. But I need to give my tithe and and, and my offerings unto the Lord. That's part of my service. That's part of me showing him that I love him. Somebody said one time to a preacher, you don't understand. That 10% will pay a bill. And, and, and I remember I used to think like that a lot. I used to take care of the books uh, and, and pay the bills there in the beginning because I thought that was the thing that man was supposed to do. I'm done with mine. But anyway, I wanted to do it. And, and I'd write the tithes check out. But some months I'm saying, I'm holding it. Because things, and I wasn't a Christian at that time, but we would pay tithes. And I was holding it. We need it. So she would say, give me the book. She took the books over, and she took care of it. I never missed that money. And God always blessed me. Even before I was a Christian, I gave tithes. Because I knew that was a thing that I was supposed to do. And that's part of my service, my love, my giving, my service to Him. You see, the world does not understand God's peace. The world don't understand all that, you know, because the world says, what about me? It's about me. It's about me. It's about me getting what I need. It's about me having the joy in my life. It's about everybody loving me and I don't have to love nobody else. If they don't love me the way I think they should love me, I'm just going to cry. Ooh. See, the world can't understand what true love is because they don't have Christ in their life. Amen. But once they get God in their life, they will understand what love is. So there is no peace for this world if they don't have Jesus. I, I think about our country. I think about the direction our country has been going in and the direction it might continue to go in. I'm praying that, that we find a way to put God back into America once again, that we will be a country of prayer, that we will be a country of sacrifice, that we will be a country of peace, that we will be a country that knows that God is still God. Amen? Amen. Instead of worried about, well, what do I get out of it? Uh -huh. and, and you know, you hear, you hear all these great people that get up and they talk. And, 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 and y'all forgive me here if I get in trouble. So I'm, I'm not going to go too far here, but I am going to touch it. You get all these people from Hollywood. They, they're on TV. And they think they're something. And then they're saying, well, I don't even know if this God thing is a real thing. Well, let me tell you something. One day, they're going to know that God is real. Amen? Amen. Because they're going to stand face to face with Him one day. They're going to recognize who He is. But their life is eternal. They have no peace. But they want to tell you how to live your life. They want to tell you this and they want to tell you that. But I'm here to tell you today, the world cannot have peace because it doesn't have God. But we have peace. Somebody say, I have peace. I have peace. Come on, somebody say, I have peace. I have peace. We have peace because we know God. Philippians, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. This is what the scripture says. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Now, let's look at that again. And the peace of God, so you've got to have the peace of God, amen? Amen. Which surpasses all understanding. In other words, you can't understand it. That's right. It surpasses all understanding. In other words, maybe our minds can't comprehend it. Will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Now, I remember when Christ came into my life. And I remember laying in that bed at 1 o'clock in the morning and just wrestling with the Lord. And I remember the Lord speaking to me because he come, he come to me many, many times and I just run. And, and there was a lot of times I felt like I was a Christian. And, and, and I just went back and forth. But that night, when I truly opened up my heart, my mind, and everything to him, and he came in my life, that was the first time in my life I remember what peace really meant. Or I knew what peace really meant. It meant that I had peace that if I just go to sleep and didn't wake up, I'm going to be with Him. And you know what? And after all these years, 
all these years of serving him, he gets better and better every day. Amen. Think about it. He gives me that peace to deal with. So the world can't understand all that. You see, let me tell you what peace, peace is. Peace is the absence of war and turmoil. In other words, when you got peace in your life, how many everybody did this? If you got God in your life, you should not be warring in your life. Amen. Amen? I'm not saying you're not going to have some battles. I'm saying you shouldn't be warring in your life. You should let God help you through, through getting through it. Uh, I read a little post the other day. I liked it pretty good. The devil says, you cannot handle this storm that you're in. And the response was back to the devil. Oh, you don't know. I am the storm. <laughs> I thought about that a little bit. Sometimes I go through some storm. But God is with me, so I am the storm. I know how to get to it. But in my mind, I'm still not at war. And I'm not having a turmoil that's just driving my mind crazy. I'm able to overcome because I have the peace. The world can't understand that. There's always got to be a logical way of handling this or a logical way of doing this or that. Let me tell you something. I don't have that in my mind because I have peace in my mind. I'm not at war with anything in my mind. And I'm not going to allow the turmoils of life to take my peace away from me. Now, why am I not going to allow that? Because Christ is in me, protects me from that. Let's go back to the scripture again. Oh, lost it, didn't we? Philippians 4, 7 again. Billy, if you will. Let me go back to this. We'll guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. God will surpass all, and the peace of God will surpass all understanding. We'll guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. He'll guard it for me. He'll protect it for me. And he'll help me to get through. Now think about that. So nobody raised in your hands. How many is going through a war in your mind right now? Or maybe some turmoil in your mind is just driving you bonkers. Think about it. I've been down that road. And every now and then if I let my guard down a little bit, I'll go back down that road again. But when I see it coming, when I feel it coming, I have been praying, God, give me the strength to stand up and rebuke it in the name of Jesus and not allow any war or turmoil to come in my mind. Because if I do, then my peace is not as strong as it was. I need the peace of God in my life. Mm -hmm. You see, I might live in this world, but I'm not of this world. Amen. That old gospel song says, this old world, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures lay up somewhere beyond the blue. Let me tell you something. We're just walking through this old world, but our eternal home is in heaven. Amen? And one day, one day, we're all going to be there together enjoying the blessings of God. So, and peace, so peace is after the war eternal. Peace is a good result of a night's sleep. Now, think of that. Now, think about that. How many likes to sleep? Yeah, I can go to sleep. I like sleeping. I can lay on the couch and all of a sudden, she says, you're going to wake up feeling bad. And, but when I go to sleep, now I dream a lot. I don't know if any of you dream a lot, but I do dream a lot. And sometimes I have some crazy dreams. But God always brings peace to me. God always helps me. There's something to be said about a good night's sleep. Amen? Amen. Also, peace is a lack of strife and stress which is the number one killer in people's lives. Right. Have you ever seen people, because of the war and turmoil they allow in their mind, it creates strife and stress, <laughs> and stress can create many things in your life? Amen. You ever know that? Your blood pressure goes crazy because of stress. Yeah. You overeat because of stress. Is that yes. my problem? I don't know. <laughs> you get yourself in trouble because of stress. Stress creates things and you say things that you should not say. In a few moments when we, when we do the, the say forth of trial deacons, I'm going to talk to the wives a little bit. <laughs> I love it. And that's just not for the trial, but it's for all of them. I'm going to share a little bit of things with you about responsibility as a deacon's wife. What that responsibility is and what it's not. I think some people get the wrong idea of what it is. But you, I'll tell you a little bit what it's all about. It's going to be fun. And, and I think about it sometimes. We get so stressed out because we want to be the perfect wife and do the right thing. It's like we started casting. 
And, and she, well, I don't know if she, she can remember back. I remember sometimes she got a little stressed out about being a pastor's wife because you got to do the right thing. You got to say the right thing. I don't think she was stressed that much because she kind of knew more about it than I did. But, but I could see sometimes she'd come home a little stressed. But she would always go and pray and God would give her peace. Now we've been doing it so long, she just, okay, that's the way it is. We work through it and move on. But stress can create a lot of difficult in our lives. It can get make, it just make us sick. It can make us lose our peace. Folks, I don't want to lose my peace. I'm hanging on to my peace because the world does not understand. And this world is so stressed out. So, let's look at the final thing I want to talk about here a little bit. God gives direction to those that seek Him. Now, verse 17 that I read, and let me go back to it in Isaiah 48, 17. Thus saith the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. The place of every born-again believer is to be in God's will. How many knows that God has a perfect plan for your life? How many knows that? God's got a perfect plan for your life. You might not even know it yet, but He does. I asked him, I said, God, when am I going to know it? He said, you, already, you should know it by now. <laughs> it's like a parent. God only wants the best for His children, and we want the best for our children. When Lashera was born, I didn't, I didn't know what, what being a father was all about. And, and when, when she came home, I remember she was so small, I could almost hold her in the palm of my hand. And I just look at her, and I was scared to touch her. I was scared I was going to break her. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I always would say, how am I going to take care of her? I didn't have the instincts that Sheila had. She just took her and went and did her thing and do what she was doing and all that. But when I took on that role as a father, I'm sitting here, what a responsibility God has given me. And I want to say this to parents. I don't care how old you are or how young you might be. As I began to see her grow and I began to understand my responsibilities more, my responsibilities was about meeting her needs, taking care of her. Not only that, meeting my wife's needs. It was about putting me way back here because it wasn't about me. It was about them. And that was the most important thing that I learned, that responsibility. That meant I'm getting up every morning. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to work hard. And I'm going to do what i got to do to supply the needs for them that they can be taken care of. I'm going to provide them a vehicle to drive. I'm going to provide them a place to live because that responsibility was there. And I, I instilled that in my mind. That, that's what a father is. But not only that, but it was to show them love and to, and to care for them and to be there when they, when they were down, to lift them up. And I, and I wasn't always good at it, but I did the best that I could. And I began to learn my responsibility was great. Now look at God's responsibility that it has to us. And His responsibility is He's going to love us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to meet our needs. He'll give us shelter. He'll give us food. He gives us whatever we have need of. And He's always meeting that need. So that responsibility comes along because we have peace. And the, the more I worked at being a father, the more I had more peace about being a father. And now I look today at my daughter and my son-in-law as they're raising their four kids. Somebody went to my son-in-law and daughter said, it seems like all you ever do is for your kids. They're involved, they're here, and I see some other ones that does it too, and I think it's fantastic. They do that. So if you're running here, you're running there, you take them here, you take them there. What about you? Yeah. And I think it was my son-in-law spoke up and he said, we'll have our time. But right now, it's their time. You know that? You know what? I'm gonna have, I have my time, but right now, it's your time for me to love you and care for you and to share the goodness of God. Amen? Because yeah. when I do that, God shares it back. It's my responsibility to love you and to care for you. And that's what I'll do. And that's what I've always tried to do. Sometimes I get messed up a little bit. Anybody ever done that? No. See, God, God gives blessings to those that love Him. Blessing comes in many different packages, kind of like Christmas packages. I mean, like getting under the Christmas tree on Christmas morning. I don't care if you're 60 or sick. Come on, how many likes it? Maybe 80, I don't care. I like something under the tree. Actually, I like the stockings. 
Because I know in the stockings there might be some paydays in there, and I might get me one.
God grant him that which he requests. Now think about this, that thou would enlarge my coast. Think about that. And that thy hand might be with me. But this is the part I like. That thou would, would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me, and God granted him that which he requested. Folks, if we could say the prayer of Jabez with, with a sincere heart and with God in our lives, God is going to enlarge our coast. God's going to keep his hands out of us that evil will not overtake us. I'm not saying you're not going to get angry sometimes. I'm not going to say things are not going to happen, but I'm going to tell you what. God really loved you. Yeah. And he will help you through all the battles that you go through. So let me ask you this. Do we really make sacrifices for the Lord? Do we take time for Him? Because He is the one that will give us peace. Yeah. A big question to ask yourself. I ask myself that all the time. Lord, what else can I do for you? Instead of God, what can you do for me? God, what do you want me to do? God, how can I be a blessing for you? God, how can I get me out of the way and have more of you be, be seen through me. I ask this constantly. God, help me. Help me, God. Get my arrogant, I don't, I don't know if I'm arrogant, I hope not. Get my arrogant attitudes, my selfish attitudes, all those. I'm not arrogant, am I? No, no. I but get that junk out of my mind. Help me, God, to be that servant that you want me to be. And let me realize it's not about me. Amen. Oh, my goodness. It's not. It's really not. It's about him that lives in me. Amen? Amen. It's about you. It's about my family. It's you are my family. It's about everything we can do to uplift the name of Jesus. There's a, a scripture that keeps coming to my mind. It's been in my mind four or five times. It's just part of that scripture. Where Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he said, I would draw all men unto me. We need to learn to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And bring peace to a world that doesn't understand peace. It's time that the body of Christ wake up. What a great army this body of Christ is. If we could just wake up and start praying for this world, we could see this world change. Amen. My prayer... My prayer is what it's always been. Put in the leaders of this country today, Lord, anoint them with your power. They can do nothing except what you want them to do. I pray that our leaders will come together and we become one God, one nation, with one God again. Amen? Yeah. And where we can stand and worship and praise Him. Amen? Yeah. And give Him the glory. Yes. It's time. It's time that we pray that God touch leaders. Not just the ones we have now, but the ones that's upcoming, if the Lord tarries. And even touch those that have been before. That an anointing will move throughout America once again. Because you know what? If America gets it right, America will help the rest of the world to get it right. Amen? Amen. Amen. What a responsibility. So there's no peace for the wicked. But we have peace. Amen? Could you stand with me? Peace. That prayer of Jabez is back up there again, if you will, really in. And, and look at this. Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, that my hand, that thy hand might be with me, and thou would keep me from evil. How many is wanting your coast enlarged today? Amen. How many is saying, Lord, let me touch people? God, use me as an instrument for you. God, help me. God, help me to find that peace. And how many today that are going through some turmoil in your life? Anger, hurt, frustrations, and you feel like you just want to take your hands and just throw, just throw them in the air and say, I give up. Honey's ever felt that way? Today, we can change that. 
Go ahead, Shiva. Today you can change that. Today you can have peace. As she begins to sing that song, I'm going to ask all of you that will, come and meet me at this altar. If not, if you feel more comfortable praying where you're at, that's fine. But let's just come and pray this morning and say, Lord, in this season of Thanksgiving, God, we're so thankful for all of the things that you've done for us. But Father, I pray for your peace this morning. Will you come and join us at this altar? Just come. Just come.